first game back after the All-Star break, and we're thinking, hey, let's make some sort of push to end the season. Because it's not like we're at the trade deadline, and you can rebuild and go for Victor Wadiama. That is That ship has sailed. Because it's not going to happen. So we got to cheer these fellas on and want them to win. And tonight, the effort you got from the Raptors was remarkable. The only thing I did not like in this game was the fourth quarter offense. And more or less the down the stretch offense. Where they got nothing going and then the ball got stuck. And then it's Pascal getting double teamed and taking tough shots. Don't like that. But we'll get to that in a second. Before I go any further, guys, and I want to, I want to, I want to fire something at you. Uh, it's been muddling around my mind for a while now. I was debating getting a TikTok started so I can do some live stuff. Right when, right when Chris Boucher's flying from the free throw line, I can get get a live reaction of it going. Would you guys be interested in stuff like that? And obviously, when when there's news things coming out. You know, I can, I can make little videos and whatnot. If you guys would be interested in that stuff, uh, let me know in the comments. Because I have an account made. I just haven't done anything on it yet. And if you guys are interested in it, then I'll start it up. So I want to get your guys' thoughts in the comments. But let's get to this basketball game. where the Raptors win 115-110 over the New Orleans Pelicans at Scotiabank Arena tonight. And with the W, the Raptors have won six of their last seven games. They're now only two games under 500 at 29-31. and 31. Look. For me, it's not the road to the sixth seed. For right now, it's the road to get back to 500. Once you get there, then the aspirations can get bigger. Let's start talking about that first quarter. Both teams slow. And rightfully so, right? Everyone's had a long time off with the All-Star break. Everyone's not making shots. But the Raptors do have a four-point lead after one quarter of play, 23-19. The defense was really good from the Raptors in the early going. So the question is... How are they going to continue this? Well, in the second quarter, the offense got flowing. I think they did a phenomenal job. Moving the basketball around was really nice. And defensively, they didn't waver. They only allowed 26 points in the second quarter. They dropped 31. And that four-point advantage, you are now up nine, right? Yeah, nine at the break. It's good. But in this day and age, nine points really ain't that much. So how are you going to come out in the third quarter? Well, in that third quarter, you saw a lot of different things happening. You saw energy from every which way. Scotty was making shots, you know, making some threes. I think he had the threes were in the, in the first half, I believe. But Yaka Pertl was starting to go, go to work. And then to end the third quarter, it was so massive. CJ McCollum, right, has the ball. Let me got this right here. 12 and a half seconds left on the on the game clock in the third quarter. Takes a corner three. He misses it. Boucher gets the rebound and takes off. I'm immediately saying, okay, slow it down. But he takes off from the free throw line. In game. Throws it down. Massive slam from Chris Boucher. Then they come down the floor with five seconds left. And it's blocked by Chris Boucher. To end the third quarter, Raptors go up 15. At the end of three quarters, they win the third quarter 38-32. And they've won the first three quarters. You're in a really good spot. But we've seen this story before with the Raptors where they've ended the game slow and the offense gets stuck and then they can't get stops and then you find a way to lose, right? And it was okay for a good bit of the fourth quarter, but then once the tie, once it started to dwindle down, I think the Raptors were up by, oh, was it 11? Or was it 9? With like just over two minutes left. And I'm like, fellas, just de- just get stops. And then Brandon Ingram started making shots. And I'm like, oh God, this is scary. And then it was a, was it a two-point game? And we're watching Pascal get ice out of him, taking fades and looking for fouls. And I'm like, Pascal, my man, that ball's got to move, my dude. It really does because they're doubling you. So in the last shot of the game, about 30 seconds left, right? Pascal's got the ball at the top of the floor. And I'm like, oh, no, they're going ISO again. But he drives in, kicks it to Gary. And Gary, with CJ McCollum closing out on him, takes the three, makes the three, and the Raptors go up by five. And that sealed the deal. I think Brandon Ingram came down the floor, missed the last shot, and that was all she wrote. 
They won the close game. They bent, but they didn't break. But that is the one thing, if I had to nitpick this game, it was the fact they could, did not close the game right. The last shot of the game the Raptors made was great. You drive, you have the double on you, you find the open man, you drill the shot. Shoot or shoot. Right? Not the hold onto the ball, hold onto the ball, then drive, and there's two guys coming over, plus it's JV, the big man coming at you, and you're taking a tough shot. No. That ball's got to move a bit more. It did there. Big shot from Gary, and the Raptors win at 115-110. Let's get to these players' stats. Because Jakob Pertl, for the second consecutive game, putting up ridiculous numbers. He dropped career high tw- uh, sorry, 18 boards tonight. He was all over the glass. Love Jonas Valanciunas, but JV's 12 and 12 is nothing to Jakob Pertl's 21, 18 and 2. Shot 9 of 11 from the free throw line was 3 of 7 from the free uh, sorry, 9 of 11 from the field, 3 of 7 from the free throw line, so not great there, but 3 steals, 1 block, and he had 7 offensive boards. And how many of those offensive boards led to points? Like, I'd say most of them did. Jakob Pertl was on fire, especially in that fourth quarter when they needed those stops. They needed those shots and the Raptors weren't making shots. Pertl was there to clean up the garbage and put it back up and through. Phenomenal game yet again for Jakob Pertl. His last two games with the Raptors, I mean, he had 21-18-2 today, shot 9 like it. 9 of 11, 3 of 7 from the free throw line, 3 steals and a block, and uh, was that, uh, 7 offensive boards. Then against Orlando, he had 30 points, 9 boards, couple assists, shot 15 to 17, had 6 blocks in the game, and he also had 5 offensive boards in that game. The last 2 for Yak has been incredible. And I, th- tonight was a, a much more important one for me, because he's going up against JV. A guy who's so used to being a big... So used to being a traditional big and getting those boards, JV only had two offensive rebounds tonight. Yak demolished them. And it was quite fun to watch. OG, look, good to see him back because defensively, look how many times in this game did he jump passing lanes and leading to dunks. I love what I saw there. Um, And he played pretty good defense against Brandon Ingram late. It's just, dude was just taking shots right over top of OG. It was, it was pretty incredible. Um, 12 points, six boards, couple assists for OG, shot five of 13 from the field. One of one from the line was one of eight from three. And I got to say quite a few of those were wide open shots, but again, first game back in a while, obviously had the long layoff as well. So I'm not, I can't harp on OG for that. Two steals and a block as well. Great night for OG defensively. Uh, Pascal love what I saw for the first three and a half quarters. And then the ISO ball kicked in with doubles coming at him and I didn't like it. However, great job in the last play. 26 points, 4 boards, 5 dimes, 9 of 21 from the field. At one point, it was 9 of 18. So, you missed the last 3 shots he took. So, but uh, it was really good overall. 7 of 8 from the line. It was 1 of 5 from 3, but hey, I'm okay with Pascal taking shots like that. It is what it is. Gary Trent. I said it off the top. Shoot or shoot. 18 points, no boards, 1 dime. And he shot 6 of 16. You know, it wasn't a great shooting night for Gary. 3 of 3 from the line. Three of eight from three, which aren't the greatest numbers, but you you want your you want your best shooters taking sh- big shots in big moments. And as much as the numbers, you know, he was what five of uh, what was that? What have that been? Five of fifteen from the field and two of seven from three before that shot. Don't matter to him. Takes the shot, makes the shot, gets the dub. Had two steals in the game. Did. Uh, did Gary uh, and and Scotty B? I thought honestly, I thought Scotty played phenomenal tonight. You know the stat line: yeah, eighteen points, five boards, three assists. It's not like astounding, right? Not like the twenty and tens, twenty eight and fives we've seen from Scotty quite often. Eighteen five and three is a solid line. Six of thirteen from the field, shot fairly efficiently. Four four from the line was two of four from distance. Had three steals and a block. And I just thought he was causing havoc all over the place. I think he played a phenomenal game tonight. And again, first game back, you'll want to see him continue to build on this moving forward, uh, heading into March and hopefully the playoffs in April. Uh, Chris Boucher, look, the energy the bench gave you, you didn't have much with no Fred Van Vliet. He was out for personal reasons today. So you knew you were going to have to get some sort of bench productivity. And Chris Boucher, I didn't think he was 
great off the start, right? But what I do love from Boucher is the couple offensive boards, nine, por- nine points, eight rebounds, one assist shot, four of eight from the field, and was one of three from three. And obviously building on that energy at the end of the third quarter, that's a huge swing. You block that shot there. You get you you close out the one possession, getting the rebound. You get two points of your own, and then you block the last shot at the buzzer. It's a big swing at the end of the third quarter to keep the the fans energized and all jacked up. The bench is hyped, everyone's good, and they started the fourth quarter decent. Really nice job there from Chris Boucher. I thought Precious was forcing it tonight, and the reason being, JV was just playing drop coverage. He was like, "Yeah, you're not going to shoot the three. So I'll just play back on you. And it threw Precious for a loop. He took a mid-range jumper that barely hit the rim. You know, he, he just drives in and looks all contorted. I, I didn't think it was his greatest night. He just looked all out of sorts. When Precious has the three dropping, it opens up the entire offensive arsenal for him. But obviously this year he was 1 of 1 tonight from 3 and he's shooting 25% from 3. They're going to play drop coverage. He's got to figure out other ways to help the team or start making threes. Because you're getting wide open shots. Just got to drill them. And Jeff Dowden, look, he played 19 minutes today to Jeff Dowden. But I thought he played really energetic ball. 5 points, 1 board, had 3 dimes, shot 2 of 4 from the field, was 1 of 2 from 3. And one that I love is that he missed the 3 Rebound comes back out, battles for the loose ball, gets the rebound, and then goes back up, finds Boucher underneath the tin, gives it to him, and then he throws it down for a dunk. Really nice never-give-up effort from Jeff Down. I thought defensively he looked all right, too. Again, with no Fred Van Vliet, that was your other guard. You know, you had that lanky guard in Jeff Down instead of Malachi Flynn, and he gave you great energy. I don't like the 38 minutes from Pascal, 37 from Gary, and 40 from Scotty B, though. I just... I. I I'd love to see those minutes go down, albeit, yeah, I know, lack of depth. You don't have Thad. You don't have Fred. Or I guess you had Thad, but you chose not to play him today. Um, and you don't have Fred, who's going to lo- log a lot of minutes as well. And uh, I think OG got in foul trouble as well. He had five fouls, only played 32 minutes, albeit you don't want to push him too far anyways. So those are the numbers I wanted to throw out to you guys. Team stats, they shot 46% from the field, 43% from three. And 76% from the free throw line. Not bad totals there. Raptors shot 47% from the field. Only 29% from three. I think they only made nine threes in the game. So they definitely struggled there. But again, not having your main three-point shooter in Fred Van Vliet, it makes sense why it was a little bit of a drop-off there. Uh, 80% from the free throw line. Even with Jacoperto going three of seven from the line, Raptors still shoot 80%. Tells you a lot of the other guys made their shots, made their freebies. You love what you saw there. Plus five in the rebounds, plus uh, five in the offensive boards, 11-6. Yak had seven of the 11 offensive rebounds. The presence he made tonight, phenomenal. And we're just hoping this continues moving forward. Plus 20 in points in the plate. Points, points, what the hell did I just say? Points in the paint. Shout out Yak. Yak and skills, baby. Yak and turtle. And, uh, and Pascal Siak, I'm getting it done. Was it Yak and turtle? Pascal Swirl Siakam. I got nothing. I'm trying some stupid stuff. Either way, Raptor fans, that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the win today, because yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch. Smack that like button. Do appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. You guys not already comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the game. Would you like, would you not like from today's game for the Toronto Raptors? The Twitter and Instagram links are down below. So follow up and send me DM guys do all that great stuff. The discord link is down below as well. So follow up there. If you guys have not done so already, and I will talk to you guys. Um, Leafs edition tomorrow as they host the Minnesota Wild at Scotiabank Arena. Looking to, uh, you know, build off of the last W, right? They played against Buffalo Sabres. Looking to build off of that six-goal performance and uh, get another W. Because, oh, crap, did Tampa win tonight? They tied it at five last time I checked. Uh, oh, they lost in overtime. So there you go. So they only picked up one point. So the Leafs can pick up two tomorrow. Good things on the horizon for the Leafs, hopefully. And as for the Toronto Raptors, they're back in action on Saturday. Noon tip-off in Detroit, Air Canada West, as the Raptors look to win their seven of their last eight, looking to win their third consecutive, I believe. Hold on a minute. No, they, they've already won three in a row, right? Am I, am I right about that? The Raptor fans, when I come back from my, my all-star break, Throws me for a loop. They've won three straight. They're seven and three in their last ten. They look to, for the first time this year, they look to win their fourth consecutive contest against Detroit. If this team wants any chance in the playoffs, or at least to get to a decent enough seed, these are games you gotta win against Detroit. Noon in Detroit.
All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the game tonight. We'll talk to you guys then.